Hi everyone, thank you so much for joining us. We're just gonna wait one more minute for the rest of the participants to come. Thanks everyone. One more minute and we're gonna start um, our live updates from Moldova for Israel's response to the Ukrainian crisis. While we're waiting, please uh, look at the pictures uh, live from our team uh, today and yesterday. Hi, good morning, good evening. Thank you so much for joining us. We're gonna start in the next minute. Here is our wonderful team in Moldova. While we're waiting, uh, you can be watching the pictures and seeing the team in action. Um, Here is our safe space, which you'll hear more about this evening. Uh, this was constructing it yesterday. Thank you so much for joining us. We're gonna be starting in the next minute or so. We're just waiting for all our attendees to join. Hi everyone, good evening, good morning from wherever you are. Thank you so much for joining us. We're just waiting for the participants to all enter and we'll be ready to start in the next minute or so. In the meantime, please check out the pictures and enjoy from our team uh, from Moldova. Okay, hi everyone. Sorry for those that have been waiting um, and we're gonna get underway now. Thank you so much for joining um, our live update uh, from Moldova um, at the border uh, with Ukraine. Um, we're really excited this evening to be able to hear from our team who are currently situated on the border. Um, and they'll be telling you much more about their impressions, what they've been doing over the last couple of days and what they're hearing. Um, from all the various people that are coming from the Ukraine. So without further ado, uh, I'm excited first to introduce uh, Israel's global CEO, Yotab Politsa. Yotab, welcome, um, who will welcome everyone this evening um, and start off, start off the briefing. Thank you very much, Tamar. Um, good evening, everyone from Israel. Um, I've been in this field for 14 years. Um, including um, some of the, I guess, the biggest humanitarian crisis of the last 20 years, uh, tsunami in Japan, the Ebola outbreak, the Syrian refugee crisis. But um, what we're dealing with right now, as you all know, and as you all said, is, is really a historical event and historical disaster um, of, of, of almost biblical proportions. Um, Israel is really focused on these kind of crises for 20 years. We responded to crises in 56 countries, including um, a lot of uh, the recent refugee crisis, whether it's the Syrian refugee crisis, the Afghan refugee crisis, the Venezuelan refugee crisis, the refugee crisis in East Africa. But the scale of the current crisis in Ukraine is really um, overwhelming even for us, um, more than 1 million refugees in, in less than a week. Um, the estimation are now talking about um, 
in the next two, three weeks, we'll have about 9 million refugees in the neighboring countries. Um, the situation in the Ukraine, both in terms of safety and security and the humanitarian needs are just um, beyond words. Um, so the first message that I have for you tonight is that we have to think about this crisis, not just for the next week, not just for the next month. We are now planning at Israel a minimum of five years operation. Last December, we concluded our Syrian refugee program in Greece for six years. Um, we unfortunately believe that this crisis will be at least, if not worse, uh, in terms of the humanitarian gaps and the humanitarian needs. So we're extremely grateful for many of you who are here tonight and who, who supported us in this crisis. Um, and, and we definitely need more support both in the immediate to provide immediate relief and you'll hear all about it in the next few minutes but even more importantly in the long run um, we unfortunately know that um, the media attention in many cases equals to donor attention um, but when the media moves on people think the situation is okay and and unfortunately that's not the case in almost every humanitarian crisis and even if we think about the best case scenario of the Ukraine crisis, that the war will, with the help of God and everyone, will be finished um, sooner than later, still uh, the trauma, the long-term recovery of these millions of refugees will take years. Um, and that's what we're here to do. We're here to provide long-term support, help these uh, people build resilience, rebuild their lives, rebuild their families, and um, rebuild their future. So um, without further ado, I would like to introduce um, our first uh, speaker for tonight, uh, who is um, Nama Gordisher, our global head of programs. Nama has been with us for almost 10 years with Israel and have led many of our uh, emergency missions around the world and is now leading an incredible team uh, and, and is leading this effort from headquarters for the last week. And she will give us an overview um, of the situation. Nama, over to you. Thank you, Yotam, and thank you everybody uh, who decided, uh, who cho chose to join uh, today to listen to this very important um, um, briefing about this uh, uh, very uh, disturbing situation. Um, I wanna start a little bit with, um, with our, our decision-making and, and the rationale of why we chose to move to Moldova. Um, on only two days after um, the war started, um, we, uh, our team was deployed immediately on uh, last Saturday, only two days after, uh, to Moldova to lead an emergency mission to explore the situation on ground to understand how we can best support while uh, offering immediate response. And the reason we chose to focus on Moldova uh, when Poland was on the news on, uh, and uh, Romania as well, um, we decided to move into Moldova for a couple of uh, reasons. One, because of the size of the country, uh, it's relative to the neighboring countries, it's small in size. Um, and the population as well is uh, small in size. Therefore, even though um, at that point, may perhaps less refugees started flowing in, uh, it was very clear that the um, uh, impact that that level of, uh, of volume, that level of influx of refugee, refugees coming into the country will very much um, uh, burden the ability of the systems and the services that are existing in the country to, uh, to support this uh, situation. Um, it is also a little bit different in terms of its political uh, context, its uh, 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 political uh, relationship with Ukraine and obviously with Russia as well, uh, which puts it uh, in a little bit more of a 
fragile situation um, and its financial stability is much less. Uh, for all these reasons, uh, we decided to focus on Moldova and to send our initial team to Moldova. Um, even though the hotspot might have been in different places, it was very much on the news uh, over the border in Poland. Uh, and this is one of the motivation for us to make sure that we go to the places that will become most vulnerable uh, and are many times also left behind. Um, what we see up to now for the past week when the team uh, um, has been working in Moldova, uh, what we see is a large, uh, a large um, population coming in, uh, gradually growing. The amount of people coming into the country gradually is growing, mostly women and children. The elderly uh, are, uh, for the time being, are still left behind in Ukraine. And the uh, men, 18 to 60, are not allowed to cross the border uh, and they're re required to stay in the country and support um, uh, their country in this uh, uh, in fighting this war. Uh, for the first wave of the people coming in, we uh, see that it's uh, mostly uh, the people who are a little bit better off financially and have the ability, the financial ability um, and um, to, to take their belongings, to get into the car and to, to go towards a, a new future. Uh, we expect this uh, to change as time goes by and uh, the war continues uh, and to start seeing more and more uh, vulnerable populations crossing by. Uh, we also noticed a very, very strong solidarity uh, by uh, the Moldovan uh, population on all levels. Uh, the civil society organization are working very hard uh, to respond and to use uh, their skill set uh, to support the refugees, the official authorities. Uh, and uh, we also see a very strong uh, mobility of the, um, of the uh, civil society and the community. Uh, activists come together to work, volunteer, and to make sure that, um, that the needs are being met. Uh, for the time being, we see a very, very uh, strong flow of refugee, refugees uh, trans transiting through Moldova uh, because of the mostly of the conditions that we uh, described that I described just a minute ago. Um, the motivation for the timing is to continue moving from Moldova. There is a lot of worry of uh, uh, how. Um, this war will affect the political situation in Moldova and what that will mean in terms of uh, Russia's um, uh, activities uh, in Moldova, uh, more explicitly for Moldova to be next if anything happens. Uh, in Ukraine. Uh, so uh, the population is currently still in transit. Therefore, we not only see uh, more and more of a clog of refugees uh, in the Ukrainian border trying to cross into Moldova, we also see more and more a uh, clog of uh, um, refugees trying to cross into Romania, uh, which creates a triple a, a complex situation, one on the border coming into the country, two on the border leaving the country, um, meaning days and days and hours um, uh, standing and, uh, and trying to cross alongside to overpopulated cities and uh, obviously uh, overstretched uh, services. Um, and for us, as I was mentioned before, we came first and foremost to respond to the immediate needs. We are uh, very, very focused on making sure that the population is safe, is uh, has access to all their uh, basic needs, uh, their well-being and their psychosocial uh, well-being is met and is uh, addressed. Uh, we uh, focus on distribution of relief items and we focus on public health, especially uh, uh, for the population, the children and the women uh, who are crossing to make sure that uh, the, the vulnerable populations don't become even more vulnerable because of these conditions. Um, so we focus on ensuring that the safety and the dignity and the access to these services are met on the immediate run. Uh, and at the same time, we work very strongly with the authorities, with the local non-governmental organizations and with the community to see that we work together and also plan already for the long run. Because as was mentioned, we understand that this is not a situation that uh, will end anytime soon. Even if the war will end, 
the state of these of, the, of this population will not go back to what it was. Uh, it is very unclear uh, if even when it ends, who will actually choose to go back and where will they set, settle for the long run. Um, and we're working closely with the authorities, with the NGOs and uh, with the volunteers to build not only, not only to respond to the immediate needs, but really uh, build the ability and the capacity, the systems and the services to continue meeting the needs of, the, of uh, these refugees uh, and community for, for the longer term. Um, I, I'm happy uh, to um, send back to invite uh, Tamar uh, to continue facilitating our discussion for the rest of the, of the evening, uh, together with our uh, members who are in Moldova now and uh, actually offering the support. Thank you. Thank you very much, Nama. Uh, thanks for setting the context. And I would like to invite Ethan and Hagit, who are live from Moldova right now as we speak, uh, the key members of our emergency response mission. Um, I'd like to welcome, and before you start, before we jump in, uh, I would just like to ask the audience, please, please, please use the chat function. Um, this is a great opportunity to ask all the questions that you've been thinking of um, as you've been watching the news. Um, from, from home, um, they'd be more than happy to answer questions uh, as we get towards the end of, the, of, our, of their speaking. So please, please ask away. Okay, first of all, I would like to thank, uh, I'd like to welcome and thank you guys for being here. I know you've had a very, very intense day and a very intense few days. Um, so I will, we really, really wanna hear from you. Sure. Um, so can you, first of all, please introduce yourselves um, and then, and then we'll get started. Sure, so um, as previously heard, my name is Ethan. I'm Israel's uh, Media and Communications Manager. Uh, globally, I oversee our communications and uh, I'm here in Moldova right now, kind of ensuring that we're not just kind of telling stories and collecting stories and finding out kind of what's happening, but um, really sort of showing the situation um, and, and showing what's going on. Hi everyone, um, I'm Chagit and I'm uh, leading the mission now, the emergency response uh, for the next few weeks. Um, I've been working in East Raid um, in the past few years, um, so it was a very natural, um, important return for me to the team. <laughs> Thank you. Um, okay, so can you can you just tell us a little bit about the last few days, uh, how they've been, um, what's what's how's it been on the border uh, with the Ukraine and Moldova? What are your first impressions? If you could just kind of shine a light of what you've been seeing and hearing, um, that would be great. Sure. So um, we landed. We we arrived in Moldova on uh, on Sunday night after landing in Romania and then driving across and. Um, Kind of very late hours Sunday night, early Monday morning, we got to Chisinau, um, Chisinau, the capital of Moldova, um, and we spent kind of we we immediately started um, forming relationships with the government here, with different local partners, NGOs, so that we could kind of hit the ground running. And on Tuesday, we arrived at Palanca, the border crossing in the south. Um, so Palanca is the main border crossing that most of the traffic is coming through. So we saw. I think today was 100,000 people in total since the start of the war, according to the Moldovan government, have crossed the, um, into the country, mostly at Palanca. Um, you get there, you drive down kind of, it's about two and a half hours from Kishinev. Um, you drive down these like small country roads and you end up basically at a, a very small border crossing point with one single kind of road with the one lane going each way. Um, we got there for the first time Tuesday morning and um, already there was a big line of cars on both sides. The first line kind of on our side was Moldovans, Moldovan volunteers who were coming to drive people, um, pick up Ukrainians who'd cross by foot and drive them wherever they needed to go. Um, and going the other way were cars with Ukrainian license plates, people who had crossed. You get down to the border and it's basically chaos. Um, there, when we first arrived on Tuesday, there, was, there were two small tents. There were a lot of Moldovan volunteers trying to hand out food, trying to give people blankets, things that they might need. Um, and there were police, authority figures, etc. but no one really had any idea kind of where to go, what was happening. 
Um, and we very, very quickly, and there were also no other international organizations there. Um, we very quickly realized that one of the main needs, apart from kind of basic physical stuff, like uh, keeping warm, like hygiene supplies is going to be protection, is going to be kind of ensuring the resilience of especially the women and children who are crossing, because it's mostly women and children. Um, and as we, over the last three days, so yesterday especially, and then today the numbers are growing and growing. Um, from two small tents, it's growing to more and more kind of space. So now we've got, there's like a very big tent full of um, people handing out food. And then we um, yesterday put up a very big tent to be, to serve as this, um, a space for mothers and their babies, a kind of safe, relatively warm space where we've got supplies, we've got diapers, we've got um, food, we've got lots of kind of provisions so that they can keep themselves safe for the few hours they're there. Mm -hmm. And the, the people who are crossing um, are, are increasingly um, in increasingly difficult situations, increasingly vulnerable, um, increasingly come from kind of lower socioeconomic backgrounds, um, and so increasingly scared as well, I think it's fair to say. Yeah. Hagit, can you tell us a little bit about um, the people you've been meeting? What, you know, what have they been saying? How, how has the experience been so far? It would be great to kind of hear a little bit about, uh, you know, what the Ukrainians have been saying to the team. Yeah, um, I think also to to lead upon what Ethan, you were saying. So there isn't a, a strong correlation between the amount of people that you see crazy, crazy amount of, of influx of people coming in. And uh, by the way, many are coming in also now at night, which is uh, kind of the difficult hour uh, from uh, the information that we were receiving from the different security uh, people on the border. Um, and there isn't a correlation between the amount of people to the amount of support that they need. So I think being there as uh, very, very early responders um, was very uh, uh, important um, and having kind of the safe space where we really target the well-being of these people. Um, you know, just, just seeing these uh, mothers and uh, many, many kids around them uh, seems very uh, or disoriented. Uh, people are asking if they'll have food to feed their babies the next day. Uh, people are asking if buses are coming to pick them up. They're not sure, you know, what the next steps are. Um, there is no information. Uh, many organizations, local organizations, are turning for us to us to kind of try and get some more uh, data on what the next steps are. Um, so I think our presence there now is, a, is very unique and very important. Um, the people that we're meeting, um, you know, there was an interesting story uh, uh, today while we were in our tent and we were creating, you know, all these activities for, for the parents and for the children and themselves. We were also training a group of uh, volunteers um, from a local organization that we're working with and that are kind of taking ownership also together with us on the process, which is really important. So we were talking in the tent and one of uh, the Ukraine women who doesn't have children um, came up and she wanted to really help and support uh, the activities that we're doing. Um, and, uh, and she overheard us saying uh, the word refugee and you saw kind of her face uh, kind of trying to really intake um, that the word is uh, describing her. Um, and we spoke about it that, you know, uh, it, it took time for people to really understand that they're refugees now. You know, she was saying what I have here, the suitcase that you see, this one bag, this, this is now where I am. This is who I am. Um, and that was kind of a really important, uh, I think, moment for us to you know, you talk about refugees, but at the end of the day, it's, uh, you know, it's, it's you and me and uh, this kind of situation. So, um, so yeah, uh, so the situation is very, very alarming, uh, many people and, um, and just the weather, the weather is terrible. So uh, we're working yeah, a lot. It's, uh, uh, yeah. it's snowy, it's rainy, it's very, very cold. Um, you're outside a lot and you feel like your hands are going to fall off. Um, it's really, it's very cold for us and it's even colder for um, the people who are crossing. Yeah. And, and are, they, are they coming equipped uh, in the crossing? I mean, what, what are most people kind of coming with? What have they brought with them? Have they managed so, to bring things or not so much? So most people have like a suitcase with them with um, 
and and we've also actually seen this change a little bit so on day one on tuesday which was the, the first day we were there pretty much everyone had who we met had packed all of the diapers for their babies and all of the food and were like prepared for two or three days by yesterday already that kind of wasn't quite the case but mm -hmm. people are they have suitcases they have clothes often they brought their dogs or cats or pets um but they don't have everything you would need to uh to like even make it through a few days i think yeah i think also uh, because of the extreme weather and people not knowing you know what the next step is so at some point we were trying to convince a few uh there was some room in the tent very, very small amount of room but there was room and um we were trying to convince some mothers and really um infants you know babies to come in the tent and the mother said you know i'm not coming in because yeah. i have to wait and see if a bus is coming um, and obviously the bus didn't come for hours later. So we were trying to equip, you know, these different people with uh, any, you know, winter resilience uh, equipment. So that's uh, another step that we're taking. So other than, you know, providing the security, the training, the, the psychosocial support that Nama was talking about, uh, we're also dealing a lot with uh, very large uh, distributions to support kind of the, the ongoing uh, journey that these people have. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So can you tell us a little bit about, you know, okay, where's Israel in this picture? What, are, what is our focus at the moment for the first few days? Obviously, you're assessing what's happening, but what are your immediate thoughts? Um, if you can even talk a little bit more shifting to sort of medium term, you know, what are you seeing? Um, and if you can also touch on other actors in Moldova at the moment who are seeing other organizations, uh, what's the situation from that perspective as well? Thank you. Yeah. yeah, so I think um, building on the, the know-how and the expertise that we have in these kinds of situations, uh, we, we always look at the emergency response and the relief as kind of an opportunity for, for longer term uh, um, work, uh, also with the local community, also with the refugees, also uh, with the government itself. Um, uh, which is very important. Um, the, the, community itself here in Moldova are very distressed as well. They're talking a lot about the fact that they might have to flee at some point too. Um, so uh, there is a lot of motivation to support uh, just from being wonderful human beings. And, and there's also a very strong internal fear of what their tomorrow will look like. Um, so many, many uh, a, a civil organizations, civil society is very strong and, and collaborative. And uh, we're working with, uh, with a few of them. Um, and of course, also with the government uh, officials. So uh, we're building on more uh, centers for, uh, for mothers, for children. Um, so we, we're designing now child-friendly spaces that can really kind of uh, contain this, uh, this situation and provide more resilience, both in the child point of view and both in the parent point of view. Uh, we're designing different programs having to do not only with kind of the social work uh, uh, perspective, but also with uh, medical perspectives as well in terms of providing support to mothers and, and first aid training and, and really how that kind of the situation evolves um, and building kind of the whole structure also of first responders here in Moldova to be able and uh, be equipped with more uh, knowledge on emergency response and working with refugees and working with people with a severe um, immediate uh, trauma. Um, so now that's kind of where we're focusing, um, focusing mm -hmm. our work. Thank you. We're getting a lot of questions from the participants, so I'm gonna I'm gonna ask a few of those. Uh, I'm gonna ask a few at a time, so please uh, choose choose the ones that you're ready to answer now. Um, so a lot of interest also specifically in COVID. What's the situation? How are how is our team also kind of dealing with that issue? And and are you finding it's something that you're having to deal with kind of uh, you know while you're there? Um, a lot of interest if the Mold how the Moldovan government and authorities and you know civil society organizations are welcoming you or you know what's what's the perception um, and how how are you kind of being greeted um, and the last one I will ask uh, while you're thinking of the answers to those questions um, how dealing with language issues how and, and and tell us a little bit more about our team and the Israeli team and who have you got there. Thanks. Sure. Um, so like quickly on COVID, 
Um, just because it was it was a conversation that I had today with one of the um, one of the Ukrainians that was in our town, and he was he had actually crossed earlier in the day, but he was waiting for his family to cross, so he spent several hours with us, um, just kind of helping out because he needed something to do. Um, and someone coughed, and they said, "Oh, it's not COVID." And he said, um, "Here, right now, in Moldova." COVID doesn't matter. And I think that's the attitude of a lot of the people who are, who are crossing in the, for, for very obvious um, reasons of personal physical safety, um, kind of COVID becomes secondary. For us, obviously, it's important to um, maintain our safety and, and also do our best to maintain the safety of the people around us. Um, so we're wearing masks, we're bringing masks to the space as well. Um, and we're, we're bringing hand sanitizer and we're, we're kind of doing our best in a very yeah. difficult, chaotic situation. Yeah, I think also part of the distributions, part of the assessment that we've done, um, we've learned more about what we need to equip the uh, hygiene uh, kits. So part of that is also with uh, some perspective to COVID as well and people's concerns. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Do you remember the other ones or would you like yeah, to <laughs> Maybe I'll just say something about uh, language. Uh, um, a large majority of our team speaks uh, speaks Russian. Um, uh, some additional uh, uh, languages that can support us here, and we're working a lot with. Uh, I think there are several. Uh, you can see segments of refugees that do understand English. The majority probably doesn't. Um, government officials and organizations here. Um, there's always a few focal people who speak really good English. Um, yes, but the majority of our team is speaking Russian, which is uh, very important. The professionals who are additional professionals who are on their way. So that's kind of something that we're uh, putting a large emphasis on. Yeah, and every day we've gone to the border, we've had people to translate as mm -hmm. well. So that um, to make sure that we can properly communicate with people, um, including people who only speak Ukrainian or only speak Russian. It's, um, it's, mm -hmm. it's really important. And the other question was relating to the Moldovan government, the authorities, uh, kind of what's the reception been, what's the feeling there? Um, and also, if you can touch while you're talking about that, is about kind of coordination with other partners. Who are the organizations? Who are we working with? What's the kind of general scene from that sense? I think I'll just say yeah. uh, from, from the uh, point of view of the government, so um, I think uh, also being here first, but also uh, in general, I think as a, a policy now, the government is very keen uh, uh, to support and do, do what they can um, in the situation. Um, and I think alongside that, there is still a constant fear of how long is the situation going to last and what is it going to, to take you know, from, from a government that financially isn't also very strong. Um, so, so I think um, the motivation is high, um, and we we are having a lot of a really really good partnership and collaborations. Um, yes, but, but you can you can see the fear. I mean, also yeah. in regards to the tent, you know, we wanted to to you know establish this really big tent, and uh, the the government you know officials were opposing. They were saying you know we don't want to have you know very large great tents there we don't want people to stay and you know we had to explain listen people do not want to stay especially not in that point which is very extreme and very difficult but this is your only way to provide you know actual uh, vital uh, support and response so so we got an okay for that but i i'm not sure uh, more organizations coming in will have that uh, yeah i mean we we because also because we were here so early on our very first day in the country, we we're already meeting with government officials and, and, and meeting with different NGOs, local NGOs and different um, kind of community organizations. And um, so we were able to very, very quickly form really strong bonds and relationships with those different actors, uh, which has been absolutely crucial because it's meant that we have people to speak to and we know kind of um, the situation and also they, um, kind of are turning to us and, and see uh, what we're bringing and, and, and the role that Israel has and can play. Um, and it, it's the, the attitude that they've had also to Ukrainians in general has been really positive and really amazing to see in a lot of ways. Yeah, and I think just uh, what you asked, um, uh, Tamal, we're, we're establishing many, many um, 
not only uh, uh, relationships and connections uh, with different uh, organizations here, but but actual uh, partnerships. So we already have joint uh, capacity building workshops um, next week that we're going to run with the uh, uh, local organizations, one of them called Keystone, many different organizations that are based here um, that uh, uh, are working to provide uh, educational support, inclusive educational support. Uh, we're going to be working with um, a large amount of social workers um, that uh, are part of the municipality and the kind of welfare a, a platform here in the region and we're going to conduct a training so we can build with them the mechanism itself um, yeah and we're, and we're also of course in touch uh, with different large uh, international organizations that actually are not here yet present but we're in touch with a representative so um, we were speaking today of course with the uh, UNHCR volunteers that uh, were trying to to get from us uh, some information on what's going on they're really kind of trying to assess um, uh, we're in touch, of course, uh, with UNICEF, um, also on issues of, uh, of children, of education, of well-being. Um, yeah, so it's, it's very interesting. But you're finding that a lot of the INGOs are not, are not currently... Yeah, we, not, yeah. Not, not, not yet, and not at um, the border mm -hmm. of Palanca, which, yeah. is where, which is kind of the biggest concentration of people, because it, and it, it, people arrive and there are hundreds of people there and they stay and then they move on and um, there isn't much tracking of where people are going and there yeah. isn't much kind mm -hmm. of coordination that way and so we haven't really seen other organizations there particularly. Yeah. I will also say that we're also in touch with uh, the Jewish community here mm -hmm. uh, which is playing a really big role um, and we're trying to support as much as we can. Um, we're also in touch with uh, different uh, uh, foundations that want to uh, see how they can uh, work together with us. Um, and also uh, we're developing some interesting connections with the private sector, um, mm -hmm. Israeli and international private sector. So, so yeah, I think it's really uh, developing, um, but yeah, uh, the large NGOs are not physically present yet but we're in touch with them okay great um thank you for that um so a few people are, are wondering you mentioned that moldova primarily is is kind of a trans transit country and people were staying you know for a short period um do you see a scenario what's your feeling at the moment that some ukrainian refugees will possibly stay there for a slightly whether it's a shorter term medium term or longer term um, and then I guess connected to that a little bit about where you see Israel aid uh, moving forward at the moment or what, where we see Israel aid moving forward at the moment. Um, and people are interested in the team that we have on the ground at the moment. Um, so it'd be interesting to know about the type of professionals we're currently looking for. Okay, so, so I'll just uh, say um, very short about your first question and takes me back, I think, to what your Tam said that uh, uh, you know, I'm, I'm remembering uh, 2016 when I was leading the mission in a, a northern part of, a, of Greece, uh, working in the refugee camp of Idomeni. Um, everyone was sure that that's, you know, just um, kind of a travel point and no one is going to be staying there because also the, the situation was very difficult. The government had a, a very, diff um, it was very difficult for for to kind of contain um, the influx and the situation. And like Yotam said, uh, six years from then, uh, we are still there. So it's it's very difficult to say now, but I think we are seeing now um, a flow of um, refugees with a different kind of socioeconomic background. And I think for them, yeah. it's gonna be much more challenging and difficult to- And and already we're seeing long lines at the borders to Romania and, yeah. and people who don't really have anywhere else to go. And so at a certain point, uh, people have fewer choices. Um, the first like waves of people were the people who had the resources to leave immediately and, and, and get across. And now we're, we're seeing, especially with the, the way the war is developing and the way that um, kind of civilians see themselves more as targets, we're seeing more and more people who really don't necessarily have other places to go. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um... A few people are interested, and I know this is a question we get a lot as an Israeli organization, um, you know, as being there as Israel Aid, as an Israeli organization, um, how are people greeting you, um, I think is the last one of the last questions, and then we'll have a, a last thought from you, but I'll come back to that uh, when, you've, when you've answered that. 
Uh, people are greeting us positively. Um, like we, we um, people say, oh, where are you from? We say, oh, we're Israel, we're from Israel. And they say, ah, oh, cool. <laughs> Um, it's really, um, it, it, it's not only like not an issue from any negative point of view, it's a, it's a plus for a lot of people. Um, and also a lot of people we meet, um, which I'll just say like very quickly, we've met many people who have family in Israel, both um, Ukrainians, cro Ukrainians crossing with Jewish heritage and also Moldovans um, from local communities with Jewish heritage or Jewish families who are in Israel. So people yeah. that... I think, uh, you know, us, us uh, ourselves, we were talking yeah. about it, laughing about it last night, that uh, most of us on the team have uh, heritage uh, in yeah. uh, Moldova, uh, myself as well. So it's, uh, yeah. yeah, this it's kind of, you know, uh, this, uh, this cycle, but the, the approach is very, very positive for now. Great. So first of all, thank you both. I know you're having crazy, crazy long days and everything is, is very, very intense. Um, and I'd just like to end uh, from you with a final thought, something you'd like to say to everyone at home. Um, you know, most of the people here, we've got hundreds of people joining this, uh, this webinar at the moment. Um, everyone is very much glued to the screens. Everyone's very uh, connected and interesting. They want to know how they can help. Um, there's a lot of interest. I would love just to hear from both of you, just a final thought, final impressions, what, what you would say to, to all the people that are watching. Um, I think my final thought and, and um, it's something that I've been really moved by for the past few days has just been the um, incredible strength and resilience of the people we've seen who have crossed, even in the most difficult situations, even after spending whole days waiting at the border crossing, hours and hours doing what should be a less than one hour drive from Odessa to Palanca. Um, they cross and then they're still uh, like trying to find other people that they know that they oh their cousin's friend is also crossing later today. I'm going to wait for them so that we can come together. The the way in which the community is coming together has been amazing to see. And um, what we're doing and and kind of why we're there and why it's it's really important to continue supporting this kind of work um, is harnessing that and bringing that really to the fore and, and helping those communities and the people who are crossing to, to um, like really build that personal resilience and, and, and kind of take their lives and their safety and their strength into their own hands. Yeah, I think um, I'll continue that, but, but I would say um, that I'm worried. Yeah, I'm really, really worried about the situation. Um, I think also uh, coming today uh, to a mission as a young mother myself and seeing all these mothers and all these children, um, it's, uh, it's very alarming what's happening and the situation needs support. It's not gonna be ending very soon and it's going to be getting worse and worse uh, every day. We see it getting worse and worse. We see faces of people more concerned. Uh, today in uh, the tent, uh, when we were finally able to put uh, some heating and you know the tent was packed, but there was like these corners for children to sit and to play. And the parents in the beginning were a little bit reluctant to kind of let their kids go out of their sight, but slowly, slowly they felt more secure and safe. Um, there was a mother that I saw tearing up. Uh, I don't know if it was because of the situation or something that she heard on the phone a minute before, but her children were smiling and laughing and you saw that she could yeah. breathe. And um, so that's on a very immediate, obviously, point of view yeah. where we're working on, you know, more in-depth, uh, impactful programs, etc. cetera. But, um, but yeah, I, I think on that note of being worried and, and knowing that there's such an audience today. So uh, please, keep in tuned and, um, and support in any way possible. I think um, that, that's, uh, that's what they need now yeah. to know that the world is supporting. Thank you. Thank you. That very, very powerful, very, very powerful words. Uh, we really appreciate you sharing your experiences. Um, thank you so much, Ethan and Hagit. Um, we're with you. Um, we're very much supporting from here. Um, and thank you so much also for kind of giving us an insight and sharing. And I know that we'll, we'll keep everyone updated as the mission continues. Um, so 
on that note, I would like to bring back your Tam um, to kind of uh, close us, close the evening for us. Thank you, Atam. Thank you. Um, so I always, as we always say, and, 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 and I strongly believe it now more than ever, Israel is really all about the people and, and, um, and we're so privileged and lucky to have incredible team members, both in our headquarter in Israel and in the team on the ground. Um, I'll just finish with basically what I started and, 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 and this is my mantra, this is our mantra at Israel. Um, it's, it's a terrible crisis of, of biblical proportions and the support that is needed is immediate, but also long-term. And that's what we're here to do. We're here to provide immediate professional humanitarian aid. And we will be there with these <clears throat> Ukrainian refugees, um, whether they'll go back to their country and will need a long-term support or whether they'll stay out of their countries. We're going to be there with them side by side, accompanying them in this <clears throat> long and difficult and challenging journey. And um, we need each and every one of you to um, support them and support us as we work in this journey with them. <clears throat> Whether it's immediate support, providing them relief supplies, um, supporting these um, children and mothers centers that we establish, um, or whether these are long-term mental health needs and, and um, community resilience uh, that they will desperately need. We really ask you um, to be with us on this important journey to, to put your trust uh, in Israel uh, as you have been doing. And I also wanna take this opportunity once again to thank um, many of our supporters who have already supported us in this crisis and in many other crises. Um, unfortunately, this is not the only crisis that we're dealing with right now. Our teams are in 16 countries in ongoing crisis doing this work. So uh, we couldn't be more grateful for all of your support and trust um, and leadership uh, throughout this process. Um, so there are different ways to get involved. The most important, and I cannot stop emphasizing it, is really financial support so we can continue this work not only now, but in the next five years. But there are also other ways to get involved. And I know some questions about volunteers and others. And also uh, there are ways to register. We do take some professional volunteers. Um, we have a lot of people requesting to join, which is great. Um, so we, need, we will need people also in the long run. So please do reach out to us. Thank you once again. Um, and please stay tuned for more updates, more stories, and please continue to support the Ukrainian people and Israel, we need it more than ever. Thank you very much.